Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you youth training. It's super complicated. As a parent training your child, you need to learn how to set expectations. And the expectations I believe you need to set are effort, attitude, and consistency. And training can be used to help develop all three of these things. When training your kid, expect them to have a positive attitude. It's not always gonna happen, but that's your expectation. Now training can help build an attitude that helps deal with all the negative emotions they might, might be feeling and how to kind of turn it around and handle it with class. Effort, again, must be learned. You're not, can't, don't expect your kids to squat with the same effort as Tom Platt's, all right? But you have to use training to help them learn how to give effort by pushing them just a little bit occasionally on something that they know they can handle, but requires just a little more effort than they're used to. This doesn't have to happen all the time. And remember, effort is very much tied into attitude. The better your attitude, the better your effort. This is not rocket science, people. Now, consistency is probably the hardest part, and really the consistency lies with the parent. It's much easier to take a day off to not have to de, uh, deal with a bad attitude with the kid and not really have to play the bad guy. But remember, you're the parent. Now, don't be surprised if their effort, attitude, and consistency mirrors you. This is a fancy way of saying, get your own ass in order. Hold yourself to a highest degree of discipline, effort, attitude, consistency, uh, even more so than you'd ever expect from your children. Always lead from the front. Now, remember, kids want to succeed. Kids want to make you happy and kids like high expectations. Have awesome standards that are both high but achievable. Remember that the weight lifted on a movement is not the goal. Being awesomely consistent with great effort and a killer attitude, that is the goal. Remember when training your child, start early and start too light. You don't have to start with the barbell. Just start building daily training habits. As an example, our youngest son, James, we started training him when he was four or five years old, and all we did was one elevated push-up a day and five squats every day. Very simple. Now, over time, we added some volume, but we never did too much. We added some movements, such as jumping jacks and some running and some box jumps, stuff like that, hanging from the monkey bars, but it never took more than five or ten minutes. The goal was to understand that every day we try to do something. Now, everyone asked, when do I start my child with weights? And the answer is, I have no idea. It's really gonna be based on their physical and uh, mental maturity, as well as your expertise, all right? You're gonna to have to weigh that in. That's part of being a parent, but there's no right answer. Now remember, <clears throat> as long as you're not loading them too heavy or training them like they're preparing for the NFL combine, the kids will be fine. It's part of a healthy lifestyle. Now in training with the barbell, the key is submaximal training. Remember, we're trying to learn the movements. And obviously, the more that they enjoy the movements, the more they learn them, the more success they have, the better they're going to be. Their attitude and effort's going to get better. It's amazing how all that works together. Now, our goal is to have good, clean, strong, competent reps. But as you will find out, good, clean, strong, competent reps are going to be few and far between. So make sure, again, that you're submaximally loading them never going to failure and never even going near failure. In the weight room, in regards to technique, attitude, effort, all that stuff, whatever is tolerated is encouraged. So you really wanna to try to nip the bad habits out of their uh, arsenal right away. As long as you are consistent, and you're gonna be repeating yourself over and over again as a coach, as long as you are consistent, things will generally improve. The world, what I like to say this all the time, uh, the world of daily and weekly progress does not exist in our weight room, all right? You're going to be repeating the same weights and the same reps and the same exercises over and over again until they get good at them, and that's fine. There is nothing, no one really cares, I should say, how much your 10-year-old bench presses. Now, magically, if you are consistent and the loading is proper, they're going to get better. They're going to get stronger. Remember that your kids aren't chock full of testosterone right now, so they're not gonna build a ton of muscle and they're not gonna be super aggressive when they train. Now, when you find yourself consistently repeating weights over and over again, eventually the kid's mind and body are gonna have this big aha moment and they'll have this massive jump. And then, once again, you'll be doing the same weights over and over again, except a little bit higher. Now, when to increase the load on the barbell? 
You're just going to have to use your best judgment. Remember, though, this is a lifelong plan. This is not a six-week plan. You're not peaking for a power lift. Know your limits as a coach. The number one rule of coaching, don't coach what you don't know. If you can't teach a squat, for example, don't have your kids squat. Don't expect a weak, untrained, wide-eyed child to do a movement if you can't coach it. You're going to have to teach yourself how to be a better coach. There's no way around this. You guys need to commit to a weekly training plan that you both can handle, both time-wise and patience-wise. Again, your patience will be tested, your parenting will be tested, and your coaching ability will be tested. Also, know the limits of your child. For example, James's training at this point usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes three times a week. That's the bare minimum. Now, if your kid can't perform a movement, stop trying to force it. As an example, when we first started training James with the barbell, he had a difficult time with the squat. So instead of just trying to repeat it over and over again, we found alternative means to strengthen his legs. This included dumbbell squats, which he was awesome at. The prowler, running, and jumping. After a couple of months of that, we put the barbell back on his back, and you're not gonna believe what happened. He was better at squatting. Really crazy how that happens. Also, use a wide variety of motions, of uh, patterns, activities, motions, lifts, anything. Just use as many as you can and find something that your kid is good at and let them do it over and over again. Got that kind of success with a movement that they really enjoy and they know they're good at is just gonna build more self-esteem, their attitude's gonna get better, and their effort's gonna get better. Now remember, the days of breaking down the athlete and building them back up, up are over. That's all bullshit, okay? You always wanna stack wins, preferably daily wins, however you can. Use positive encouragement. Criticize when appropriate. You know, if they have an awesome attitude or awesome effort, let them know that they're doing a great job. Obviously, never give false praise. If they need an attitude adjustment or effort adjustment, let them know. All right, the next video you're about to see is my son James training. He's uh, 11 years old in this video. Uh, we start every training session out with what my wife calls special forces. It's every minute on the minute of three body weight exercises or three really any exercises you can choose, but we generally choose body weight exercises. We usually always choose the chin up, the push up, and the squat. And I believe in this video, we're doing the squat and a modified doubles press as our lower body movement. Again, this is done 10 times through, so our warm up takes about 10 minutes. After that, almost every time we're in the weight room, we choose three lifts. One is the main lift, and we choose generally two assistance exercises. And we do these as a circuit. So we start it off, for example, we'll choose a squat bench with a deadlift as our main movement. And then we'll do two additional assistance exercises uh, that will help, uh, help him build uh, his strength and uh, conditioning and whatever else. So, but guys, the key here is the workouts are very simple. We use a wide variety of movements. We all only use one main lift a day. Uh, and I really want a really awesome uh, effort on that. And then uh, on the assistant stuff, guys, you can be as creative as you want. Again, we only go five times through the main lift circuit. This is Jim Wendler, author and creator of Five Through One. I hope you enjoy the video. Obviously, it's not the full workout because that is boring. No one wants to see anyone work out, let alone an 11-year-old workout. All right, we are in the weight room, and I'm going to show you guys a short uh, sample of a workout that we do with James. This is my youngest son. My oldest son is holding the camera now, so we've got three swinging Richards here. Uh, so for our warm-up, we're going to do 10 rounds. Uh, we're going to do uh, one chin-up three push-ups, uh, 10 squats, and then the next round we'll do one chin-up, three push-ups, and five of like what I call like a modified devil's press, okay? So we, the general rest time is about, we do a round every minute or every 45 seconds unless we get distracted or something. But we're gonna go through 10 times, we're only gonna show two. So here we go. We got three push-ups now. And we got 10 body weight squats. And we're gonna wait just a little bit. Unless you wanna go. Are you ready to go? Alright. He's gonna be a trooper here. <laughs> we got one chance. We're gonna be Use a parallel grip. We use whatever grip he's most comfortable with. 
Then we got three push-ups. We're going to head over to the devil's modified devil's press, in which I yell at him. Getting great position, strong and quick. One, two, three, four, five, and bring it down nice and strong and safe. Good. Hey, real quick, guys, we're going to go uh, through that exact uh, scenario, uh, what, five more times? Four more times. Give us 10 total, and then we're going to move on to the actual weight workout. Yeah. All right. All right, so we finished the warm-up. Uh, now James is going to do his traditional strength training session. Today, our main lift, we always do one main lift every day, and our main lift today is the bench press. Our two assistance exercises, we're going to still do chin-ups and pull-ups with a variety of grips, except during this portion, instead of doing singles, we're going to do sets of two. And our final exercise is going to be the kettlebell squat or dumbbell squat or whatever the hell you want to say. We're going to do it on a ramp. His technique gets a little bit better when he does it like that, and that's good enough for me. So we will show uh, a couple exercises here. Again, this is done in a circuit. We go about five times through. It always depends. And loading is up to you and up to what his readiness and performance is to like today. We don't always go for records, obviously. We don't max out. We don't use weights that are too heavy. We use weights uh, and exercises that are appropriate for the individual. So here we go. We got two reps of chin ups here. Good. Oh, nice, buddy. We're going to go right to the dumbbell squat or kettlebell squat. You gotta hold it strong, good depth. Knees out. Leave a stain as much as you can. Good, 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 good. And return it properly. Good. Alright. Feel better. Strong, strong, strong. One, two, good, good, four, don't slam, better, holy shit, that was good, good. So, train your kids, guys, it's your job as a parent, teach them how to build great habits, teach them to be strong young men, thank you very much.